All right. So coming back to your application, looks like from sophomore year to senior year, your GPA went from like a 2.7 to 3.4 to a 3.9. What did you do to improve? Because that's a huge improvement. Yes. Um, so starting my undergrad year, undergraduate year, my freshman year, I was actually a biology major. Um, I was in I was a bio major my freshman and sophomore year of um, college. I didn't really enjoy taking um, biology classes. I struggled a lot with those biology classes um, the first two years. So then I did more research and I ended up switching my major from bio to neuroscience where I really found a huge connection within those neuroscience classes and the department of neuroscience. And just my engagement within the neuroscience department, you know, going to SI sessions, um, attending tutoring sessions and all that good um, stuff. And just having that communication within with my professors, I feel that really helped my GPA improve and my study habits as well. Absolutely. And if I'm taking a second or if I'm not looking at you, I'm writing notes. So oh, I, no, I, have you're fine. I promise. You're um, good. <laughs> So that's definitely a good answer. And I've seen a few neuro majors, you know, in PA school of medicine, it seems to be a popular major that just kind of clicks with some people. Yes. Me personally, I can't do neuro. Um, mm-hmm. I love, yeah, I love bio. I love like nephrology, internal medicine. That's what I'm working in, uh, but I can't do neuro. So really neuro just people. came so easy to me. Um, and like for my bio one and bio two classes, I did okay in didn't get A's in those classes but once I got into my neuroscience classes I feel like I only got one C in one of my classes and then the rest were all A's so there was a huge um difference in in my grades when I switched to neuro yeah once you kind of found your niche you Mm -hmm. uh kind of flourished um as you can imagine my one concern would be you know PA school isn't all neuro Correct. only one module you know we have the rest of the body Correct. So when we are going to do very very advanced uh basic bio and lots of it in you know rapid succession not a lot of time to rest how are you going to cope so i will definitely be using more studying like different studying techniques i am a visual learner um when i'm studying so in regards to the non-neuroscience classes i feel like i will definitely be dedicating more time and just paying more attention to detail for me to understand the concepts um better um i feel like with me i i am a good i memorize things very well and fast is just understanding the concepts behind it. I feel like that's where I would struggle more, but I would definitely take more time to really sit down and um, understand the fundamental of the lectures within um, the course. Okay, absolutely understandable. All right, so that part of your application is quite good. Your grades obviously you know, skyrocketed. You are very strong academically, which is excellent. Um, very much necessary in PA school. And if you're a visual learner, I highly, highly suggest you buy one of these. Yes. Whiteboard, they're like maybe 50 bucks. But very, very worth it. And the school has a million of them everywhere. Yeah. Just buy some markers. Uh, but so that part's good. Your patient care experience. I know when your COVID 19 essay, you kind of said that it got stunted a little bit, but you got a good amount of hours, but you've kind of jumped around a lot. You had a lot of different experiences. Yes. Why do you jump around so much. Um, so the reason why I jumped around is because a lot of the practices that I tried getting in touch with, um, they really didn't allow me to get those patient care hours. Um, my mom does work in the field. So, you know, she kind of guided me on to who I can call to ask for those hours. Um, so I got extremely lucky because um, where she used to work, actually, which is the um, Clinica Mi Mi Familia and Sea Baby, that's Mm -hmm. where um, one of the providers was still there. So thankfully, I got the advantage to shadow, well, to volunteer and um, to really find my momentum through COVID-19. I also got to shadow at the orthopedic practice that I am currently working at outside of, you know, working as a medical assistant. Um, 
But other than that, I feel like it was just very difficult for me to gain, to stay at one specific spot just because of the pandemic throughout that year. Got you. So you're shadowing and you're working at the same place? Yes. And those are different roles for you? Yeah, um, so the way that it worked, we have um, long night hours. So at late night, I would clock out and then I would um, for the two hours. So I started in May at my ortho at the orthopedic clinic mm -hmm. and every Tuesday, Thursday, I would Monday and Thursday, I'm sorry. I, from five to seven 30 or, um, I would be shadowing, but then from eight to five, I'll be a medical assistant. Oh, I understand. Mm -hmm. And, and like, there's a different providers that I would shadow. It wasn't just, um, a PA or it wasn't just an NP or the MD, I would get an opportunity to shadow everybody. Mm -hmm. Those are some long hours. You don't get tired. I got exhausted. I was exhausted, but I really needed to get some shadowing hours in to make my application a little bit better. <laughs> Absolutely. And so you said you've shadowed PAs, NPs, MDs in the same practice. Yes. What do you notice is different in the way that they practice? So um, where I work, everyone, everyone treats the patients the same. Um, the only thing is in regards to the MDs, they're really not around as much. Unfortunately, since they're always in the operating room, um, they really don't have that face-to-face -face interaction with patients as much as the PAs and NPs that I do work with. Um, as you know, like NPs can only specialize in one specific field. And unlike PAs, you can specialize in whatever field you want to go into. But the PAs are have a more well-rounded um, foundation where I work at, and they're just more involved with the patient. Um, and they actually have that face-to-face -face communication, which I feel is very important, especially where I'm at. We have a lot of Hispanic patients that really um, need to understand, you know, what kind of surgeries they're about to go into, or just like the treatment plan behind what the um, surgeon wants to proceed with. So, um, yeah. Okay. So what I gathered from that is you feel like PAs have more time to kind of spend face time with the patient and they have a more well-rounded position, uh, like foundation, like you said, than the NPs, just because they do have that generalist training. Do you find that that's beneficial? Yes, I do. I do feel like it is beneficial in that aspect, especially as a, a PA. Um, yeah. Gotcha. All right. So switching gears, how do you know Dane Turner? How did he come to write you a letter? Um, so Mr. Dane, he is actually one of my instructors in Taekwondo. I've been doing uh -huh. Taekwondo since I was little. And um, he actually is like a father figure to me as well. Um, so growing up, um, when the whole incident happened with um, my mother, he mm -hmm. actually was the one that guided me throughout my years and we me and him built a really good relationship you know he always made me write all these different letters expressing my emotions or he'll give me homeworks to do and I have I would have to complete them in order for me to get my next homework so he really just taught me you know how to be patient how to really um not come across emotion as much, like, how can I explain it? Like, um, not let my, my, my emotions get the best of me, basically. So he, he was definitely a great mentor. And then um, he is actually still in Taekwondo. I sometimes go when I can and have the time, but yeah. it's really hard with everything going on right now. And you got a lot to do. Mm hmm yeah, he definitely sounds like the dad that everybody needs. Yes, he is very encouraging. And right now he's actually a sheriff. So mm -hmm. um, he's been doing that and he's doing great for himself. That's great. 
-hmm. I just I didn't actually get to see the letters. I don't think they came in CASPA, so I wasn't able to read them. But I I've never seen a a sheriff, mm -hmm. you know, like a deputy police officer, write a letter for a PA student. So I was just interested why you picked him. He he sense. wrote me an amazing letter. I yeah. I can actually he he's the only one that I actually um he sent me the letter as well just because you know um he really wanted me like to see like how he saw me you know growing up and stuff and that letter made me cry <laughs> <laughs> uh, i wish i could read it that sounds great it's just i can really... send it to you i don't mind sure. I'd love to see it. <laughs> yeah um, but yeah no that, that's great it's just it's a really interesting situation you don't see that every day Mm -hmm. You know, it's a way for you to stand out because a lot of applicants, most applicants, you know, doctor, PA, NP, maybe nursing manager, professor. That's like all you yeah. do. You I really wanted, I really wanted, um, I, that, that's actually one of the first people I actually asked to write me a letter because he saw me grow up and, you know, he saw all the challenges that I went through since I was young until now. So he, he definitely was a huge impact in my life and a great um mentor growing up so even though he's not medical you felt that that was important yes yeah sounds like family is very important to you yes it is absolutely all right so people who are caring like he is people who are great mentors sounds like you just really thrive with but what kind of people can you absolutely not work with um I feel like in the past, I've had encounters where I would be put in a situation where people would really just be hatred towards you, if that's a good word to use. Um, but I feel like I have a great personality and I communicate very well with people that I tend to not let um, those type of things get to me. Um, I feel like if I communicate well with the person and really let them know my side of like things, I feel like um, I really don't let things get, oh, excuse me. <laughs> I really don't let things get to me. Um, I feel like I, even if someone were to um, say or do something, I feel like I'll handle the situation very well, just because that's just something that I've learned throughout the years. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. You have an example? Um, this is off record. I'm so sorry. Can I use an example? Like, is a high school example okay, or does it have to be kind of more recent? As long as it like, answers the question, I would not fault you for using a high school or even okay. a kindergarten example. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Somebody pushed you over on the playground. It's okay. <laughs> Yeah, no, no. <laughs> um, well, you know, high school drama, there's always drama in high school as, you know, girls being girls. <laughs> and um, during my high school years, I was on the cheerleading team and soccer team. So there was just a lot of drama going on. Um, I was always the type to not be in drama just simply because um, as a leader for my team, because I was captain of the cheerleading and soccer team. So um, I had to be like the leader um, and show my teammates not to like really um, dive into the drama that other people outside our team were trying to um, come at our team for, if that makes sense. So I feel like overall, I um, try guiding people in the right direction instead of them um, going into the other direction. <laughs> Have you been a leader in like every situation that you've been in? Not every situation, but majority, I am a very organized person and I pay attention to detail extremely well. So I try my best to just um, not always have that leadership role, but somehow it always just comes back to me in a way. So it's just something that comes natural to me. Good answer. So you don't really seek out these opportunities. They just end up saying, just by default, Gabriella's got to do it because she's the one who can. Literally, that's how it goes the majority of the time. Understood. All right. And I'm asking this as if I was the interviewer, not as, you know, I'm me. Um, but do you have any questions for us? 
um, what do you guys see in a PA student for your program? What do you mean? Like, um, is there something specific that you would want as a student? Like, do you guys look for it in like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm trying to like gather my thoughts here. Is there anything that you see in a PA student that will um, help your program out? I struggle with these type of questions. I've noticed that, but I'm working on that. <laughs> I think that's a good place to end the, uh, the mock interview. Yeah. Okay. I'm assuming you kind of relaxed at the end in the real interview. You're not going to say you struggle with this type of question, right? Yeah, yeah. No, 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 I'm not. I'm yeah. really not. <laughs> Yeah, like I try as hard as I can to communicate, like act like this is a real interview, but everybody yeah. just like is more comfortable with me because I'm not the real interviewer. So they say things like that. And I'm like, please don't say that in the real interview. Yeah, no, no, no. I definitely would never say that in the real interview. <laughs> yeah. And like you wouldn't ask for feedback either. Uh, yeah. So understood. Yeah, that's I see where you're going with that. And that's a very good question. But I think you definitely need to rehearse how you're going to say it. OK, because you will be asked that at the end. I almost okay. guarantee it. And having um, a good question that's not like very basic and not mm -hmm. super general is a good yeah. way to go. Okay. How many questions um, do you think would be appropriate to ask the interviewers um, at the end of the interview? Well, so time is limited. Uh, they only have, you know, 10, 15, however many minutes they allocated. So you can't just like keep firing off questions. Correct. They'll think you're annoying. Correct. Um, and like, you don't want to do that, yeah. but like just have one or two just really good ones because if it's good and they answer, it's going to take them a while. And then Got you can you. answer the follow on question. Okay. You know, just what I always tell people is try to make it a conversation. Okay. Don't make it like a stiff A to B, like interviewee, interviewer exchange, make it a mm -hmm. conversation. Okay. Ask them questions as you go along. Okay. Like for instance, we were talking about the high school drama. Mm -hmm. One, like, and like, I'm going to put this report together. I'm going to think through all this for the next few hours and send you a report in like two or three days. Yeah. But just one thing that stuck out is you probably don't want to say, you know, high school girls, like, oh, yeah. Not a very PC answer because I Correct. guess, like, well, boys have drama. Yeah. So just always, always watch your professionalism. Okay. You know, don't like, it, it wouldn't bother most people, but you'll get that one person it does bother. Correct. So, just always like shoot for the lowest common denominator. If somebody okay. is like that and they happen to interview you, that could make them ding you. And that would be stupid. Got you. you okay. Know, so be very professional, very PC. Okay. Um, just say high school drama. Kids, okay. Not girls, kids. Okay. Um, you being a girl, you could get away with it more than I could, but still, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Um, so that's just one little correction. Okay. And, but for example, like if we were talking about that as your interviewer, you could have been like, well, you know, in high school, there was a lot of drama. And I love that you used the opportunity to talk about your leadership, which is mm -hmm. fantastic. Um, but like at the end of that, you could have said something like, I don't know, if you felt comfortable with the interviewer, like, were you always the leader in high school or something like that? You know what I mean? Okay. Like, just ask them a question, make it a conversation. Right. Okay. I think that would help. Okay. I would definitely, I'll have to practice that for sure. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, don't, don't be unprofessional. Don't yeah. be like, oh yeah, dude, what about you? Oh yeah, no. yeah, yeah. For but sure. just be curious about them. Like who are you as a person interviewing? All right. You know? Okay. Yeah, you're allowed to do that. Okay. People like talking about themselves more than they like conducting interviews. Correct. You know? Okay. So make them feel good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, but just okay, so overall feedback, and again, I'm gonna write this up. You're very composed, you're very professional. Uh, I definitely like your whole setting, your outfit, like everything just looks like it's been planned out. You know what I mean? It's just, you look like if I was a patient and I was video conferencing you, you're someone I would trust. So I just, I like the whole, everything, the whole setup, Thank you know, you. that's good. Another thing, just in comparison to some other mock interviews I've had, I don't know if it was a like camera sound issue or something, but I feel like some people interrupt me and they just can't hear me. And when I open my mouth, they pretend like I'm not trying to say something and they just keep talking. Mm. You didn't do that. You were very like engaged and responsive. So I don't know if that's their weakness or your strength, but definitely I appreciate it. Thank you. You know, like it's just, you're, you seem like an empathic person just even through the camera. Yeah. 
So that's definitely positive feedback. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. So that's a praise. A polish, you already know at the end, definitely be ready for a very basic question. Yeah. Like that. Like that, that was a, that was a slow pitch, you know, slam dunk kind of a question. Yeah. Like have that like ready to go. Okay. You know? Absolutely. Overall. So that was overall very good. Very good answers. I, I love that you actually took seriously the first question where you talked about stuff that you like to do. Like, I feel like I know who you are a little bit. You like to bake. You like the gym. You love your family and your dogs. You're like, your family's going to be your, you know, your solace up here. Like, I feel like I know you a little bit. A lot of people just take that time to talk more about school. Got it. Wasted opportunity. Okay. Yep. The one thing I would add in all of your answers is specifics. Okay. Okay. Like, if it makes sense to you, when you're writing your essay, you know, you have the introduction then you have to kind of like the meat of it, like the body paragraphs, and then you have the conclusion. Mm -hmm. I feel like the biggest problem most people have is they talk as if they're doing an introduction or a conclusion, but they don't never give you any of the body. They gotcha. never give you specific examples. Okay. So think of some specific examples. Like for instance, I enjoy baking in my free time as much as I can. It releases stress. I love baking snickerdoodle cookies, tres leches, like whatever. And like, you know what I mean? Okay. Aim so go, go like more in detail. That way the interviewer yeah. has a, a clear idea, basically. Write an interesting book. Don't make it a boring book. Okay. Like make me visualize stuff. You know what I mean? Not just in the mm -hmm. essay, but in the interview. Okay. I like baking chocolate chip cookies. That immediately makes me react. Oh man, I love those. Instead of I like baking, <laughs> like, okay, I baking, gross. it's a word, but I can't imagine. It. Okay. Can't smell it, can't taste it, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Talking about your dogs, my dog, Skippy. <laughs> He's a husky, husky pit. Mm -hmm. His eyes are blue. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So just go just that extra. I didn't know if I was able to do that for those type of questions, just because I don't know if like um, the interview will, interviewers will um, think that my answers are too long. Does that make sense? So it, it is OK for me to go specific, but not too, too specific. Well, let me time you saying snickerdoodle. <laughs> okay, so one second, right? So basically no time difference. Okay. But a world of difference. Okay. I like baking cookies. I like baking snickerdoodle cookies. They smell yeah. so good. Okay. Stuff like that. Okay. I love spending time with my dog. I love playing fetch with Skippy. He has blue eyes. He's so cute. Okay. See what I'm saying? Yeah. A little more personality. Still professional, but just be a little more free to just share okay. something. People remember that. Okay. There was an essay we had to read our first like day of PA school called the name of the dog uh -huh. or something or the dog's name. And it was basically all about like this doctor was interacting with a patient and she kept talking about her dog. She loved the crap out of this dog and the doctor never asked the dog's name. And so he's like, ask the dog's name, get to know the yeah. person, you know? So same thing. Okay. Don't tell them about that essay. Cause they'll be like, Oh, Boris told you to say that, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Yeah. Don't, don't tell anyone that we did this because that's not a good idea for you. Yeah. Um, until after you get in, then they won't care. Okay. <laughs> but, but yeah, so it just, you know, you see what I'm saying? I get you. Okay. Absolutely. Um, I don't know if I would have said I didn't enjoy bio and I struggled with bio. Okay. Okay. So there's two ways that we try to trick you into saying something negative. Okay. And if you say something negative and expose a weakness, we just keep picking at it. Gotcha. Okay? So for instance, like this was a compliment. It was like, hey, your GPA went way up. And you were like, yeah, I didn't like bio. <laughs> like you kind of took it negative. Gotcha. So I would avoid anything negative like the play. Okay. okay. Uh, do you think it's necessary for me to um, talk about that I was a bio major and then sure. switch to neuro? Okay. But because you love neuro. Not because you hated bio. Got it. Okay. It means the same thing. Yeah. It sounds better. Yeah. Okay. I took one neuro course or there was a neuro module and I just like really fell in love with neuro. I think it's the coolest thing. I want to be a neurology PA. Mm -hmm. Cool. Not, okay. I hated bio. Got it. Okay. And definitely don't say you struggle in bio. Okay. If they bring it up, be like, oh yeah, I learned this technique and now I'm better at it. Okay. You know, 
yeah, just don't give me anything negative to latch on to. Okay. What about like chemistry wise? Cause I know they will say something about my chem or potentially if they do, um, do I bring up if they ask, then do I talk about why I had like that withdrawal in Orgo one and like that chem 12, 12, like my, I think it was like a C plus in, um, they, yeah, if they specifically ask you, you should have an answer, Okay. but like, don't blame the professor. Don't like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What is your answer? Why did you withdraw and why did you have a C plus? Oh, well, the the that spring semester, I had three jobs. I was actually um, also working in the waitressing field um, as a server. So um, I felt like I had too much going on, you know, yeah. trying to get my volunteer experience in working. I was also working at the mall that semester. Jeez. So <laughs> well, I just had a lot. That's a yeah. good answer, but take responsibility. That, that's perfect. Like, okay. no one's perfect. Your GPA yeah. is obviously good enough. You're in. Essentially, yeah. it's all up to the interview now. Your grades don't matter. Okay. So just be honest. Be like, okay. look, honestly, that's on me. I overexerted myself. I My eyes were too big for my stomach. I had three jobs. I was getting volunteer experience, and I just couldn't handle it. Yes. So I'll know to focus on school more from that okay. on. That's it. Perfect answer. Okay. You know? Yeah. Definitely don't be like, the professor sucked. Oh um, yeah, no. My boss sucked. <laughs> I hated my roommates. You know what I mean? Definitely so, not. Like, yeah. So that's it. Just take responsibility, make it positive. Um, and then I mean the experiences, solid answer to all of that. Uh those are long hours, you don't get tired. You were like, I was exhausted, but I needed this, so love it. Yeah. <laughs> the differences in the way PAs and NPs and MDs practice. I think you had a pretty good answer there, like more broad foundation I but again I wish you would have had an example okay so just putting in more examples and think of, yeah scenario. think of like five or six stories or like situations patient encounters that you could just pull out okay if something sounds even a little bit like you could pull that story and pull it in okay but like yeah tell me how like okay well-rounded foundation yes I know we're generalists NPs are not but this one time a PA I was shadowing uh, found, you know, they were doing a gynecologic exam, but then they found a skin rash that was really interesting and they knew what to do with it. Okay. Don't be like the NP was stupid and she didn't. No, but yeah. <laughs> be like, I just really love that the PA had that generalist training and I want that. Right. Okay. Positive. Got it. Makes sense? Yes. So yeah, examples, positive. Okay. You could only take that away. I loved your story about Dane, the whole thing. I wouldn't change a freaking minute of that. That was perfect. <laughs> He was the dad, he was like a father figure to me. He gave me homework to develop myself, help me control my emotions and make me more mature. Like, love it. Yeah. Absolutely love it. No further comments. Um, okay, the other way that people can really trick you into saying something negative, and if it's a smart interviewer, they'll have something like this. It's gonna be forcing you to say something negative. Like, what kind of people can you not work with? How do you answer that honestly without being a little negative? Yeah. Well. Don't answer it. Okay. You know what I mean? Be a, be a politician. Answer the question you want to answer, not the one you're asked. You know, okay. you never answer the damn question. Mm -hmm. They just go off on a speech. Do that. Okay. Don't be like, I cannot work with blank. No, that you fell for the trap. Don't Got say it. negative. Okay. Or what was your least favorite class? Or what class did you struggle with? Or name a professor you struggled with? Or name a time when it was hard for you at work? Okay. Do you struggle with a supervisor? Anything like that. It's the same question. Got it. They want to trap you into saying something negative. Don't do it. Okay. 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 <laughs> I think you did a good job with it, but you you fell for the trap. Got it. People who are hateful towards me. <laughs> do you enjoy talking about that? You know Say that I mean? one more time. Like, do you enjoy talking about that? Like, doesn't it just give you like a weird taste in your mouth to talk about oh, people? Yeah. Yeah. So like maybe mention it for a second, but then switch to how okay. Gabriella just makes everything better. Okay. Like in your mind. Sounds good. You know, like, and yeah. again, specific, what were they? Were they, did they think you were too young to take care of them? Were they racist? Did they not look you because you were a girl? Say it and then be like, and I did not let that get me down. I provided excellent care and I was proud of myself for controlling my emotions like Dane taught me. Um, but that one really hurt. I'm going to be honest with you. Okay. You know, Okay. It in a good light. Okay. Again, examples, vulnerable, memorable, stand out. Okay. Okay. And 
that's really it. We talked about the last question. Yeah. So that's all my feedback and I'm going to write this up, but any specific questions you had? Um, I do have one specific question that I'm not sure. So I know um, with the school itself, um, you have the individual interview, you have the group interview, and then you have the essay. How am I supposed to prepare for the essay? Um, I've been I've been very stressed out about that because yeah. um, I know there's like some schools that give you the essay the day of or like, you know, the week of the interview. But I think from what I got from the from the email, they give you like the 60 minutes to do it. And I'm guessing they give you like a question and then you just answer it. But um, I'm just not sure how to prepare for that, um, right. for the essay part. I think that's what the only thing that I'm a little confused about. <laughs> so the essay, well, first off, I don't know how they're gonna do it online. Are they gonna watch you as you they write? They said that it was gonna be 60 minutes and then it's gonna be in a proctored environment. So I'm guessing they're yeah. gonna use like lockdown browser or something. And but I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm just not, and which is fine, because that's what I yeah. used during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm just not sure. I've never heard of a school doing the essay portion. And it was really new to everybody, at least like down here in Georgia. Um, we like the schools here in Georgia, we don't have to write an essay for it unless mm -hmm. it's like the supplemental essay. But during the interview, we, you know, it's a part of the interview. So I just don't know how I can prepare or, you know, like just the basic questions like, why do you want to be a PA? And, you know, that's what I, I got from um, the Savannah Perry book from her essay portion of the book. Okay. But I'm just not sure how to how to prep for that. Okay. Um, well, two things. One, it's just like an interview question. Okay. You don't know it ahead of time. You have a certain amount of time to answer it. Yeah. You have to get your thoughts together fast. Same thing, except you're okay. right. You know, okay. so it's, it's the same thing. Um, two, have very like well rehearsed, ready to go answers to the very basic question. Okay. Why do you want to be a PA? Why this program? Okay. Why do you feel ready? Have you ever struggled with anything? Just, just be ready like to okay nothing memorized but like just be very ready to answer those basic questions and i can't think of a question you can ask that's not some combination of those things correct okay you no know? yeah and just like maybe practice writing fast yeah i have i it, i'm i'm definitely going to take time to write and do that that way i can prepare myself because um I know I don't have like a language barrier, but mm -hmm. English is my second language. So there is times where I do struggle, you know, with the grammar part or just yeah. trying to come up with something like right away. So mm -hmm. that's why I think I'm just freaking out just a little bit with that. Um, could be with that yeah. And practice, don't just practice writing long essays like the PA essay, because yeah. it might not be one essay. It might be like five short ones. Yeah. Okay. An hour. It could be 10 short ones. It could be three. Okay. So just practice like writing, you know, intro, body, conclusion, or pre-write, okay. intro, body, conclusion, and just be ready to go. Okay. You know, don't yeah. freak out about it. Don't stress. You're going to do great no matter what you do. Okay. But if you want to like do extra, just practice those things. Okay. You're going to be typing, right? It's not even writing? No, it's typing from what I understood. Oh, right. um, you mm -hmm. type very fast? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. I'm going to say practice that. Okay. And then I know that like through the group interviews, I know that everything is going to be online as well, but yeah. isn't it harder when it's online if it's like group How interviews because everyone's going to be like interrupting each other. I don't, I don't know. Kind of like, I mean, in person, it was probably a little less awkward because everyone's shy and no one wants to talk and then yeah. it's very respectful, but online it is weird. Yeah. So I don't know if they're going to make you raise your hand because you can do that on Zoom or or what but i guess like you've been in zoom meetings right oh yeah the same thing you know just you hear someone talking immediately just be respectful oh i'm sorry go ahead yeah that's it just make sure okay. you're not too shy to talk oh yeah that's not a problem for me but... a problem. you saw my video <laughs> yeah. right on the group interview i'm sorry did you see my youtube video on the group interview yes i did 
So all that same stuff still applies. Okay. And except it's even easier because you don't have to memorize, you know, five, eight people's names. They're all right in front of you. Correct. Correct. You'd be like, oh, you know, Katie, I didn't hear from you yet. What do you think? Okay. She's right and there. That's, yeah. Talking. Okay. Or if no one's talking, say something first. Or okay. if five minutes and you guys still haven't even gotten to the prompt, you're just arguing. Hey guys, what do you think about like this is what the prompt says? So boom. Okay. One of those three things I guarantee you will make you stand out. Okay. Because no one does it. Everyone yeah. Just, like, I just don't, I I guess I just don't like being like the bot. I don't know, you know. Yes, like, you do. Don't lie no, to me. No, a little. But you're lady captain, soccer captain. <laughs> You're the boss, okay? You're dressed like the boss. You're you're the boss. Like there's no question about it. And they're gonna like that too. Okay. Because as a PA, you're essentially the boss. The, the yeah. doctor might be the boss, but they're in surgery, so you're the boss. Yeah. So get used to it. Yeah, I see that a lot at the clinic. That's for sure. <laughs> I mean, we're number two, and if number one's away, that means you're number one. Yeah. So. And in this interview, it's going to be a bunch of nervous little suburban white chicks. So just wrangle them up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Easy. You've okay. seen that article that's like, what is a PA student? It's like 76% are, you know, upper middle class Caucasian females. Yes. So just you being you stands out a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I interviewed, I mock interviewed one person who really, really stands out, looks nothing like the rest, but you stand out somewhat. Um, but by your behavior, that's what makes you really stand out. Be the leader. Okay. You know, you're allowed yeah. to be the leader. Don't be timid about it. Be the okay. leader. Don't be mean. Don't be rude. No, I cannot be mean. <laughs> but just be the leader. Okay. Guys, you're arguing. Let's get this prompt. All right, let's go. You know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> yeah. You got this. It's. I have a lot of faith in you. I think you're going to be great. Thank you. Hey guys, so that was actually a real mock interview I did with a real pre-PA student who did end up getting into their program. As you could tell, the interview went well, but I did have plenty of feedback and we discussed that and I thought that was actually valuable to share with you guys as well. So I really hope you enjoyed that. If you're interested in getting me to edit your essay, doing a mock interview with you, just planning your application strategy, whatever it may be, forestthepa.com to book any one of those services. I'll see you in the next one.